Okay, we have been absolutely plowing through new releases lately and it is time to round it all up with speed reviews. The final thoughts on things that I kind of left you hanging on in previous videos. So let's go ahead and jump in. Starting with the new Tower 28 Sculptino, I've had the chance to use this a handful of times since I got it, and I really love it if you are familiar with the Tower 28 blushes. It's very, very similar. It's worth pointing out that it's a lot more warm than the Salt New York or the Uma, both of which I absolutely love. So it's gonna lean a little bit more towards like a bronzer, maybe even bronzer, but it doesn't have the shimmer that the Bronzino does. But I do recommend it. I think that it's lovely, especially if you enjoy Away this formula already. Next, the Tarte Energy Blush. This is an exact dupe, yes I said dupe, of the Dior Rosy Glow in 001 Pink. It even has the pH reactive, slight, you know, adaptive color changing feature to it. They have raised the price of the Dior to $40. When I bought it, I think it was 37. Inflation is just really <laughs> aggressive. And I don't even remember which finger I put which one of them on, but they're basically the exact same thing. So Tarte is $30. Dior is $40. Dior has slightly more in the package. It is not a unique product. You don't need it in your collection if you already have something like this. To me, they're interchangeable. Next, we have the Too Faced Cloud Crush Blurring Blush. I have it in the shade Tequila Sunset. I've been using this quite a lot. I like it a lot. It's a really beautiful muted coral that's still quite vivid. And I feel like they do actually, like I kind of have to give like a teeny modicum of kudos to Too Faced for actually having blushes that look Look like they would look nice on different skin tones. So this one being one of the more muted ones but still being quite vivid and then there are ones that I wouldn't even attempt because they are so beautifully vivid and saturated with pigment but I do think that they did a good job of not making the shades super super on the nose and I think that it's just a really pretty formula. It kind of feels to me like what the Gucci blushes were going for but this is a little bit better job of it. I'm gonna say pass on the Tarte Sculpt Tape. I think that against the Charlotte Tilbury, it's evident that the Charlotte Tilbury is more of an effective contour and it has this beautiful skin enhancing blur to it. And the Tarte just kind of disappears as you blend it out every single time I have used this on camera. And I mean, yes, it's pretty, but every time I've used it on camera, I have to go in after the fact with something else. And it's not the most adaptive formula to keep reapplying. So I think that as far as usability and you parting with your money for it, I just don't recommend it. I do like the Charlotte Tilbury one better, but I still think that there are easier ways to contour your face overall than either of those products. The Charlotte Tilbury Hello Talk Matte Beauty Blush Wand has quickly, has my hair been like that the whole time? Cool, 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 cool. Y'all, the amount of product I have in my hair, it's just gonna do its own thing, okay? It's just gonna be kind of self-aware. The Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Matte Beauty Blush Wand has really knocked my socks off, especially in the original shade Pillow Talk because your girl has been into really basic colors lately. But as basics go, this is super reliable and I'm very, very impressed with the formula. The way that you can actually dab this on straight from the applicator directly onto whatever face of makeup you please and it blends out without disturbing things underneath it, this gets a 10 out of 10 for me. I love it and I just keep reaching for it. The Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin, the blushes. It's just, you know, this is in rosé and brunch. This gets a conditional recommendation if you, A, are not me. <laughs> I think it's good for someone else with deeper skin because it's going to lend the nuance that's necessary to a vivid and truly on the nose kind of set of colors that the shade range is. But I have heard good reviews from people in the comments, which I do absolutely appreciate that feedback. Just saying that you like the colors in and of themselves. And if you like the colors in and of themselves and you're okay with a very on the nose kind of vivid orange or a vivid pink or a vivid red, then more power to you whatever your skin tone is. But I went ahead and swatched it next to <laughs> that pillow talk from Charlotte Tilbury to show you like what I have on my cheeks right now versus what you're going to get with just a very I would say normal swatch, non-aggressive swatch of the Danessa Myrick. So it's not about it being unusable, it's just about it being an entirely different breed of formula. It's a completely different like 
realm of the amount of saturation that's packed into it and I think that it obviously is going to work really really beautifully on deep skin tones because it's going to hold its own without getting ashy. So this is what we're talking about you know on my skin is just this very pale desaturated almost grayish kind of pink versus you know a pink in the pan that shows up pink on the face and this just runs away from me too quickly so I give it a conditional recommendation for not me. <laughs> now, I was asked to swatch the new Kosas Glow IV up against the In Beauty Face Glaze so that y'all could see in the final thoughts, you know, how they compare. So, I have that not only up against the face glaze, but also the MAC strobe cream here. It's actually good because you can see it through the wrinkles and the contours of my hand. How? distinct and do you see how like how close to the surface that kind of mica shimmer is on the two Kosas shades this being spark and revive here i have the in beauty only comes in one shade and it's a lot more kind of moisturizing and then the strobe cream from mac is also very moisturizing these almost dry like satin you know they dry more looking like an eyeshadow and i think that that's the issue that a lot of people have had with them it's just that they add almost a mattifying property to anything that you mix them with they are not necessarily skin enhancing i do feel like that looks especially in contrast against those very you know nourishing kind of moisturizer based serum based products it really looks like a liquid eyeshadow. I would pass on these. This was a like a correction to my own narrative in the video itself because the Danessa Myricks Vision Flush Glow, like when you buy them when you are shopping on the Sephora website or on her website, it actually says that they are supposed to be highlighters and gorgeous highlighters they are. So I do recommend these if what you're looking for is a really beautiful wear all day kind of highlight. This is going to give the appearance of like, you know, a ritual defeat kind of ethereal skin, but it's gonna dry down completely. And I feel like it does work really beautifully without like picking things up a ton. It still has a really nice nourishing property to it. It's not like the Glow IV. It doesn't kind of dry again, like close to the surface in that way that kind of changes the finish on your skin. And I think that you can get the same way to always talk about Danessa Myricks and stuff. Like you can get pretty much anything you want to get out of this. It's gonna just be an art supply. You just have to be aware uh, if you're me. <laughs> if this wasn't already obvious, that it's just a thin product. It's not high pigment, so. I think it's gorgeous though. Ooh, it's so pretty. Out of all the mascaras that I have tried recently, I have tried the EXA Gen C Ismea one. This is the, wow, this is the winner. This is straight to the front of the line, top of the list. Absolutely love it. Like to the point that it actually makes me use a non-tubing mascara sometimes by choice, okay? And that is the Ami Cole mascara. It's so beautiful. It's so fluffy and even and fluttery and builds this really consistent volume. So it goes width and length and separation. It does all of it and it's really easy to control. It doesn't happen really, really quickly and it wears all day. I am very, very impressed by Ami Cole across the board. And this has just absolutely knocked my socks off to the point that I texted Hannah. I said, Hannah, I know you don't have a lot of time to, you know, watch a ton of other creators content, especially my videos are like an hour plus long most of the time. So you don't catch my little Easter eggs to you that often, but I need to make sure that this message gets to you. And that is that for your taste in mascara, I really recommend the Ami Cole mascara. I just think that it's a crowd pleaser. And and when I said like the, the smallest thing about it in two different videos, like I reviewed it in one video and then I kind of casually mentioned it as a comparison in another video, people came in my comments and were like, this yeah, mascara is my favorite. I love it so much. So yeah, it's just love, 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 love it. And I love the packaging. I love that it's orange. I love how easy it is to find. It's just, it kind of like, it gives me good vibes when I interact with it. Another Ami Cole thing, oh, I've tried a lot of lip balms and lip glosses and lip oils and lip what have yous lately. And like the Make Beauty one, I have a bunch of clear ones that I've been trying. I have like, you know, a whole box of stuff that was sent to me by my affiliate partner and stuff like that. This one is the one, okay? Not just this formula, but this color. This is what I have on right now. And this is, again, the Ami Cole Lip Treatment Oil, and it is just in their, like, original brown. They have released more shades in it, but I recommend this color to anybody, okay? Because it's, like, this perfect neutral brown that is, like, translucent without being milky, so it, like, enhances the color of your lips without being a black lip gloss where, like, the, the pigmentation's kind of inconsistent, but without being that, like, super nude that as soon as you get into like you know deeper lip colors it's just gonna like show every little line in your lips like it is the perfect universal lip gloss 
I feel absolutely no qualms in saying that. These have stolen my heart. This is the About Face Lip Color Butter, uh, the Cherry Pick Lip Color Butter. I just happened to pull the one called the Cranberries. What I love about About Face and what I love about this release as well, Halsey makes such a point of putting out every collection as a complete thought. And I just love to be able to say, I love this and there's something for everybody. Only the exception of like my people with skin allergies and things like that because this has a very, very strong fragrance. Like a, an extraordinarily strong, like, you know, synthetic kind of um, mango peach ring kind of smell. I love it. I don't taste it the way that I do in like the mangobomb.com, but you know, there are people that I've heard from in my comments who are just like lamenting the fact that these are so beautiful and they can't use them because, you know, uh, they've got ingredients and then kind of, you know, irritate sensitive skin. They're a lot of fun though. They kind of give me like grown up Bonnie Bell. And especially as I'm, you know, getting back into <laughs> my indie sleaze era, I'm just really loving being steeped in nostalgia. And About Face always gives me the nostalgia. I'm already talking too long about these. These are just a smash, okay? The LYS Matte Lipsticks, this is getting a conditional recommendation for someone else. I really, really like them and I like the shades, but I am not much of a matte lip girl. And this is a little bit deeper for me, but everything else about this is just giving. It's giving me everything that I need. I love the packaging. I love the delivery system. I love this little dainty wand that's so easy to use, the bullet. And I really do dig the shades. I just don't, this is not a product that inherently appeals to me. I kind of thought that I would be, you know, pleasantly surprised. And I was, but at the same time, I think that this is, I mean, God, look at that gorgeous grungy color. It's so pretty. This is moody. It's beautiful. It's just not specifically for me. And finally, we have these Kulfi blushes. These are the Mendy Moment blushes. I adore these. I will say it is the more muted shade that I like the best, but again, it's another shade range that really has something for everyone. I hope you can swatch these actually in Sephora. I'm not sure if they're online only. I hope not. This happens to be the shade Lucky Lotus. And for people with medium to deep skin, with that like, you know, pure golden undertone or a golden red undertone. This is going to be like such a killer color on you. But here I have Pinky Promise. What's really, really unique and remarkable about these is the finish that they leave on the skin. They have a tiny bit of like an iridescence, not like a glitter or anything, but kind of like the Charlotte Tilbury ones where, you know, it just gives your skin this beautiful kind of refracted blur. It sort of obscures light in a really beautiful way without again that pigment looking really uneven and kind of close to the surface and the colors are really vivid and gorgeous but easy to manipulate they are I feel like a little less pigmented than the like the Danessa Myers ones for example and the shades are a little bit more nuanced and I just love that the finish on it is actually kind of similar to that Danessa Myers it's that hybrid finish of going on like a cream but it feathers really easily at the edges and it does have that really nice kind of like somewhere in between a silicone-y feeling of being almost dry, but still being like emollient enough that, you know, it's not gonna look all like patchy and it's not like settling into the lines of my hands as I, you know, spread it out. It's a really, really brilliant formula. A lot of times these things, you know, when they get really packed with pigment, that's what you lose is some of the hydration. And I do feel like even though these do have that lovely hybrid finish to them, they do still feel really hydrating. So I think this is an ingenious formula and I expect to see some brands trying to copy this because this really feels more advanced and more cosmetically elegant than a cloud paint. And you know, brands have been trying to do cloud paints for ages. This definitely feels like, you know, cloud paint 3.0. Phew, okay. I really feel like there are probably still a lot of things that I, that I need to talk about, but these are the main ones that I feel like have been sort of the viral releases lately that people have been asking the most about and that have been like new releases on, you know, Sephora or Ulta or what have you. And so I wanted to make sure that I gave y'all one spot that you could come back to, to know my final thoughts on these things, whether, you know what I mean? A lot of times people are showing up in my DMs or in the comments just being like, up or down, up or down, up or down, especially especially compared to, you know, other things that I've been trying. So hopefully those, you know, handful of swatches were helpful. Let me know any other ones that you want like dedicated final thoughts on because I can do another, you know, speed reviews video, absolutely no problem. But let me know in the comments below what other products you are interested in me trying next.
next and maybe other videos that you want to see from me. So I hope y'all enjoyed this. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you made it all the way to the end of the video and you are not yet subscribed, I recommend subscribing. We have a lot of fun here. It's just adding some sunshine to your feed and I will put a video right here that I think that you will enjoy. Also, all of my art is for sale. Khaki Carmody on Instagram. It's, you know, anytime you see a painting back here, it is, it is buyable. So uh, I will link my Instagram profile for my paintings down below as well. I'm on Patreon. <laughs> That's where you can see vlogs uh, and also participate in a much kind of closer knit community. I think that's all the housekeeping. I love you all so much. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.